Hey everyone, welcome back to this Tosca automation playlist and we are continuing to talk about Tosca best practices. Now this is the second video in this series. Now if you have not watched the first video, go ahead and watch the first video on Tosca best practices. And then I would also recommend you to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on the remaining videos on this very topic. Now coming to Tosca best practice number two. So we are going to talk about verification points in test cases. Now verification points are absolute necessary in any test case which you develop or design with any particular automation tool uh, for uh, automating any particular test cases. Okay, so without verification points, your test case will be considered as incomplete. And the reason is very simple. If you don't have a verification point, then you don't know whether the expected result is matching the actual result. So the overall purpose of the test case is not met if you don't have anything to verify. So it will always be a false positive, right? So no matter if your uh, verification is passing or failing, the test case will pass if you don't have a verification point. So every test case should have at least one or even more verification points. And these verifications will actually make your test case link to your requirements, right? So whatever uh, validations are being done on the test case will be done as verification points in your automated test case. Okay, so it's very important. And let's see uh, what will happen in Tosca if you don't have a verification point and what will happen if you have a verification point. Now let's consider a very simple example for this particular best practice. So you have got a login screen where you enter an email and a password and then click on login and then it will log in into your application, right? And you're trying to automate this particular scenario. Now you will write the test case or you'll design the test case so that it can identify those fields and it can enter the values there. It can click on login and then maybe you will log out of the application. So in this whole scenario, you must have one verification point, right? So for example, once you log in into application, you want to make sure that login was successful, right? So maybe you will come here and on the home page, you will check whether the logout uh, link is appearing, right? So that could be your verification. Similarly, for any particular test case, any scenario, you should find out the verification points, right? Now coming back to Tosca, okay? So here is my login user test case. And you can see here, uh, I'm clicking on the login, I'm entering the login credentials, and then I'm clicking on the login button. And then here, I am also verifying um, the login, right? Where I'm verifying whether this logout link is visible equals to true, and then the action mode is verified, yeah? But let's first disable this, and let's see what will be the result of this test case, okay? So if I go here, and let me log out from this application so that it is in that particular state. And let me run this now. And you will see that uh, this test case will obviously pass, okay? Because uh, Tosca will only verify till it is able to click on that login link. After that, it doesn't matter what uh, is your output, okay, from the application. Even if the application doesn't log in and you get a separate page or a login failure, Tosca is not going to uh, give you a failure because you haven't written or you haven't designed your test case uh, according to that, right? So this test case is always going to pass. And also in the login info, you will not have any kind of verification, right? So any expected or actual result won't be shown. It will be only the steps. Uh, so if it is able to find these controls, it will always pass, okay? And that's the disadvantage of having a test case like this without any verification point because there is no purpose of this. It can obviously run, but it is not uh, actually solving your purpose of verifying this particular test case, okay? So whether it is actually doing what is what it is supposed to do, right? 
so now if i enable this uh, verification step and if i go ahead and let me log out again and let me go ahead and run this again okay and this time around you will see that there would be an additional verification step and if it is not able to find the logout link so if the logout link is um, not present in the application it will fail this test case obviously it is present now so it will pass it but in scenarios where this particular link is missing then your test case will fail right and that's the expected result which you want you want to verify something so that when the application is not responding as per the expectations then that should be a failure okay so here you can see verification was successful expected value was this actual value was this right so you need this for every test case and it should also be part of your report right otherwise um, you will never get any defects and you should always log a defect whenever you find a failure a bug or when the actual result is not matching the expected result right so this is why verification points are important in any automation uh, no matter if you use tosca or any other automation tool but especially uh, coming to tosca when you execute a particular test case so in the results if you want um, some verification results uh, in your test steps then you need to have a verification point okay so that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new today so keep watching this series of videos on best practices and keep on improving your automated test cases if you are developing them for your project or for your own purpose in tosca so until the next video keep watching and keep learning